All right. Um, so uh, let's talk about IBM, uh, IBM's Watson Health. So here's the story. Here's the story from, from uh, Axios. Really good story. Uh, uh, Big Blue, uh, after spending billions of dollars, is, is trying to uh, offload IBM Watson. Uh, they are looking for about a billion dollars uh, for the technology. Uh, this comes after IBM spent around $4 billion in terms of acquisitions in getting the Watson Health product line up and running. This is just mentioning acquisitions, but there's probably like a ton of R&D and expense that went into this. So it's probably higher. So they're trying to get a billion dollars for an asset that they invested $4 billion in. Uh, so why is that? Why, why, you know, I, if, if it's, if it's AI, if it's, it's a hot space like healthcare, how is it that they're only getting 25% of their original investment? Um, this is coming on the heels of Oracle making a really bad, big acquisition. They recently purchased Cerner for $28 billion. That's a lot of money. Um, and Cerner is a major player in the electronic health record space. So the other company that you'll know in that space is Epic. Epic probably owns 75% of that market. And I'm guessing that Cerner is a number two in that space. It's interesting to me that they there's such a tight uh, um, it's, a, it's such a, a tightly held market by Epic. Um, some interesting um, things there. So, um, I, so I think, you know, this is kind of an interesting story. I think it, it tells you a little bit about deploying AI to the enterprise. And also there's another theme where we have to think about how we deploy AI to a space like the healthcare industry. So we, let's talk about, um, some of the, the, the comments that we got here. So a lot of commentary around this being a mostly sort of a marketing and sales push. Um, I totally get that. Uh, you know, you know, I, IBM. There was a lot of buzz going on around IBM Watson. They made a big splash, and I think IBM was looking to get a lot of traction with the AI wave. They may have pushed the marketing a little bit too much uh, because once you know, once people buy into it, and then you have to deliver AI. That is sort of that is the conundrum there. Um, so uh, so that's uh, I totally get that. Uh, so let me just summarize what the, the the key themes here that I that I've seen from this conversation and definitely jump on this thread and feel free to add to it. Feel free to to take it in. But here is my basic summary in terms of why. IBM was not able to get any traction, at least on the healthcare side. Um, one is a an, an underappreciation of how much work goes into getting data sets ready for AI. So you have a lot of work going on in AI. You you spend um, you do your training on clean data sets. You do your training with certain partners, and then when you try to roll that out, one of the first roadblocks that you hit is the fact that the quality of the data for the new prospect or new customer isn't up to par. This happens all the time. And in part, I think because a lot of your training when you're developing these new products, they're usually with early adopters that um, have really good data and have really good leadership. But um, oftentimes what you'll find is that in the real world, there's also folks that don't have really good data. So that's uh, group B, say, uh, for, for the sake of the the of the, the grouping. Group B does not have really high quality data. And then there's also people that don't have any data at all. There's group C that doesn't have any data at all. So you've trained your model on high quality data, and then you're rolling it out and you're finding that 80% of the market isn't where you thought it was going to be. And so as you're developing new AI products for enterprise, you have to keep that in mind. The question that you have to ask yourself is what happens if my prospect doesn't have 50% of the features that I need to go into this model? 
And that's kind of, you know, if you're a product manager, that's the question you got to be asking your data scientist. Like, okay, it works great for early adopter company number two, but what happens if we test this against somebody that's been, you know, that's, that's a legacy type of company that maybe doesn't have the quality of data? Can we still deliver the type of analytics and AI that we want to deliver? So that is um, a key point, comes up all the time. So just make sure that you kind of keep that in the, in, in the back of your head as you're rolling out new AI and machine learning products. So um, let's talk specifically about healthcare. You know, if you're, if you're going to be leveraging raw data that's coming from hospital networks, you have to appreciate that a lot of that data is not going to be of the highest quality and is going to be incomplete. I've worked with medical um, um, medical records and that type of data. A lot of it is in PDF form. So one of the first things that you have to do is you have to do OCR and you have to extract the raw text. It's unformatted. So you have to put that together uh, and you have to kind of extract the, 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 the features from it. That's a lot of work. Um, you also have to add structure to it. So you may not get it in the nice tabular format that you might want. You might have to actually do that, put together the schema yourself. And it also might vary from source to source to source. So uh, medical records are no joke. Those are like, that's really hard to get into. Um, so just kind of, um, so just kind of appreciate that and be aware of that. Appreciate that you're going to have a lot of upfront data work, the or data prep that has to happen. And you should bake that in. And why this is important is because you um you want to get your prospect ready for that i think in part why uh, ibm well, um watson health didn't do so well was because the expectations were set so high if you look at the marketing the ads around it um you know you you felt like as soon as you got ibm watson boom you were going to get insights you were going to get ai you were going to get like streamlined productivity but that probably doesn't happen until a good three, six, nine months of integration, data cleaning, training. And then you might get some of that. And you have to be committed to that in terms of the time and the expense. And a lot of companies just aren't ready for that. So if you're selling AI and machine learning, just try to set that expectation that, hey, there might be some time where we have to make sure that our models are going to work for your data. Let's kind of bake that in and try to set those expectations so that you can surprise to the upside when you are able to get your analytics up and running in a shorter period than you would have thought and um, not surprise to the downside. So managing those, those clients' expectations is going to be really, really important. The last point that I want to touch on here is appreciating the fact that the healthcare system has somewhat of a unique business model. So in, in, in machine learning, you usually have inputs that you map to outputs. So the inputs go in your feature space. So you might have 10 different attributes and you that's your raw data. And then that's mapped to an output. What is the effect that you're trying to um, determine, predict, or um, get to? Uh, that is your 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 outcome, your Y variable. So for example, if you're building a real estate model, your features or your inputs are going to be the number of bedrooms you have in a home, square feet, the location, zip code, things like that. And then your output is going to be the price that you're expecting for that particular home. That's how it should work. Now in healthcare, it's not it's not very clear how that you know where those uh, 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 you know how those two match. So for example, you know your inputs, you know the services that you're providing to a patient. But do you really know the outcome? Do you really know how healthy they got over a period of time? What it, what are you trying to determine? Are you trying to determine the 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 pain that they measure when they come in the next time? Are you trying to determine if they don't come in at all? Because if they're healthy, they might not come back into the hospital system. So that was great. But then how does that map to the inputs that you provided? That is really tricky. That is really tricky to navigate. So I think if you're going into the healthcare space, that is something that you have to appreciate. And in general, when you're developing AI for industry or for enterprise, you have to take into consideration the, the business structure 
of the organization and the ecosystem in which they're working so that you can see whether or not it jives well with uh, the, the, tr the traditional AI machine learning approach uh, especially when it comes to supervised learning, you might you can do some other things like unsupervised learning techniques, things like that. But most people are going to do supervised learning techniques, and that's a, the general framework for that. So um, hats off. Somebody mentioned that. I want to give them a shout out, uh, Sean uh, Wong. So um, good shout out. Uh, thank you for bringing that up. And so check out that thread. Jump in there, comment, and uh, let me know what you think about IBM Watson Health. Would you pay a billion dollars for that? Is there a big opportunity for that? Should IBM Watson be selling to Oracle now to complete the merger of data with AI? Uh, let me know what you think, and um, and uh, the, we'll continue to follow that story. All right. So let me get our super special guest on here on the the program here, and and I'll start sharing that and. 